Hey, so maybe you've just watched my how to create a login with Discord button in PHP video, and now you're wondering, how could I add this user that just logged in to my database? Uh, I might want to keep track of all the users that have joined or make a little community where, you know, you have all the users, or maybe that is the unique identifier where you add additional information that you now collect on your website to that Discord ID. Okay, so if you haven't already, um, check out this login with Discord button so that you can kind of get through the flow of OAuth. That's where we'll be starting today. In our uh, starter file, we just have a basic index.php, login with Discord. We have our process OAuth. Um, and I commented out all the guild stuff. So if you want to play with the user's guilds, maybe um, have them join your server or get a list of their guilds, um, check out the other video, it'll be in the description, but we're not going to use that code today. We're just going to start with creating a database and adding the user into it. So I'll be using phpMyAdmin. It's a very, very easy way to navigate through MySQL. That'll be the database we'll be using today. And um, we'll, we'll be going from scratch, right? Creating the database, adding the user, creating columns, all that stuff. With that said, if you've never set up phpMyAdmin or WMP or anything like that, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video. I can maybe help you out. You can join the Discord server. But um, basically, the, the starting point is you need some kind of way to access um, the you know phpMyAdmin navigation. So if you have WMP, it's just localhost slash phpMyAdmin, and then you go from there. So what we'll do is we'll create our database. So I'll hit new. I'll make the database new application two. I'll hit create. Then I'll make my table. My table is going to be called users. Hit go. And then I'm just going to create my columns. So I'll have an auto increment ID. I'll have my Discord ID. I'll have my Discord avatar. And then I'll have just a timestamp so I can kind of know when was this uh, entry in the table created. So I have to make some changes here for ID. This has to be an auto increment and it's going to automatically default to primary key. This is going to be var car 255 for our Discord ID. I know that Discord um, is less than 255 characters, but I'm just I'm not sure off the top of my head how much it is. Best practice in production would be to figure that out and kind of limit it. Create it at timestamp. What I'll do is I'll make the default created uh, to being current time. And so whenever any entry is created, two things happen. One, this ID automatically increments. Two, this created at automatically puts the timestamp under the current server time for that entry. So I'll hit save. So perfect. I now have a um, database with users and it's in my application. Good. So now I'm going to go back to my code. and I'm going to try to connect to this. So I go to my db.php file that I just created. So we'll check it out here in my project. I have db.php. And now I'm going to connect to my database. So in my Cinder companion guide, we did all these picture steps. We created all our columns. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect via PDO to my database. So we connect to our host, localhost. Since I'm using WAMP, localhost is my computer. Uh, user, well, we haven't created one yet. We haven't created a password for that user. But my database, we know, is not new application. It's new application 2. And this will be whatever information. Maybe you're hosting it remotely. Maybe you're hosting it on your machine. Maybe it's some kind of, I don't know, serverless thing. This is where you connect to your database. And now, if all this stuff is correct, we'll go to db.php. We'll get connected successfully. If not, we'll get connection failed. But we need to create this user. So how do we do that? We go back to phpMyAdmin. We're in our database in our table. We don't have to be in our table. We just have to be in our database. We'll hit privileges, create add user account. I'm going to create a user called dev user2. Um, host name is going to be from which host can they connect from? I'm going to say any. I'll put MySQL password here. Uh, and then MySQL, MySQL password again. Now, keep in mind, you're going to want this to be super strong. You don't want your um, database to be brute forced. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to make it nice and easy. And then I'm going to hit check all privileges to, to let this user, aka my PHP application, act on behalf of all of these different things on my um, uh, MySQL database. Um, again, in production, you might not want to have all these things enabled just in case you have some things slip through the cracks. All right, let's hit go. And now I'm going to update my user to being let's see, dev user 2. 
and then MySQL password. That is what I just entered. And so if I now go to db.php, it'll say connected successfully. So perfect, it worked. Now let's add some functions to interact with our new database. I'll go back to my Cinder Companion Guide. We created our user. We connected successfully. Now we're going to try to add a user to our database by using this code here. So how does this work? Add user to database. Well, it has three parameters, PDO, Discord ID, and Discord avatar. PDO refers to this PDO, which is how we connect our database. So we're saying, OK, this function is going to use this database connection. Great. Discord ID, well, we're going to specify that. We're going to say our Discord ID is test. Discord avatar, we're going to make it test avatar here. And so we're going to pass this into the function. It's going to go into a basic MySQL insert statement. And so what you'll notice here is, OK, this stuff makes sense. Insert into users, the column names, values. And what's this? These aren't variables, right? These are prepared statements where we are escaping these characters and saying, OK, replace these on the kind of um, when this actually gets executed so we can't directly inject code into here. So you couldn't go into here and make this a variable and then make this variable some kind of, you know, drop tables. And if you pass Discord ID as drop tables, it would completely destroy your database. So instead, we're going to use um, these prepared statements that have um, a reference to this object that's being executed here. And so we're inserting Discord ID, the Discord ID prepared statement, Discord avatar, Discord avatar statement. And then we'll go here. Um, we're actually setting that object as saying Discord ID is equal to Discord ID, Discord avatar is equal to Discord avatar. And these come from our parameters in our function. So now, since we have this function, we can try testing and adding to our database. So I'm going to add user to database. And we're going to hit test. So let's try it here. We're going to go back to that file. Oh, perfect. It inserted successfully. Let's check if it actually did. We'll go to users. Oh, great. It added it right here. All right. So now let's keep going and let's try to get uh, a user from the database by the name of test. So I'm going to copy and paste all this code into here and I'll explain it in a minute. So I'm going to get rid of this add user to database since we don't need that. But now we're going to have a function that says get user from the database. We're going to pass that same exact PDO statement because that's how we connect to our database. And we're going to pass a Discord ID. So we're checking if there's a person with the name test or Discord ID test in our table. So we're going to do select all from users where Discord ID is equal to Discord ID, same reference value to this object. So this makes sense. We're getting all the information on the user from uh, the Discord ID is equal to Discord ID. Then when we get our data by using statement fetch, we will return that data and we're going to set it to this variable user data. So now if we have some kind of user data, then we can uh, say a user exists and print their information. And if we don't, we'll echo no user exists. Well, one thing to note here is this fetch. So let's test this code real quick. We'll go to db.php. Oh, look, we have a user. And it's an array that has no, um, it's not iterable. It's just an object, ID, Discord ID, Discord avatar, et cetera. But if we had changed this fetch to fetch all, what we would see is now there is a zero, meaning that this is the first uh, iteration in this array with an object inside of it and no more, you know, one, two, three, four, fives. This is important because fetch should be used when we're only expecting one output and we're only expecting one output, this singular user. And I'll show you here in a minute when we go to the next function, get all users from the database that we want an array that represents all of them. So let's go here. I'm going to add another function. I'm going to get rid of um, this test. And I'm going to change this function to get all users. And we're going to print now user data. And I'll show you that now this should be an array with uh, multiple things. So Discord ID, uh, we don't need this in here. Uh, we have only one user in the database. If we were to add another one, it'd be zero, user two, user three, with all these incrementing. But now we can actually test this in our application. Before we do that, we're going to change our users page. This is the page that's actually going to display all the users by getting more information from the database here. I'm going to get rid of this function here and outputting it right here. So let's start with some markup. I provided the basic markup here. 
But now this is the actual markup that gets information from the server. So we're gonna include that database file that we created and played with here. I'm gonna get all my users the same way that I just demoed. Then I'm gonna have a, an empty user markup, which is gonna be outputted down here in my body of my HTML. And then I'm gonna loop through all users and each row of my users is gonna be defined as user data. So all users is a big, big, big array with all the users. User data is the individual object that contains user information. So I could do something like user data ID, and this would give me the ID of the user. Perfect. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make user markup, print out user data, discord ID, in some kind of list item that's somewhat styled. And so that is all gonna go here. And each time this loop iterates, we'll keep getting a longer and longer list. So let's test this on our users.php page. Now we still have this connected successfully, so we can get rid of that by going here and commenting out in our database.php page like that. And so now we have our first user, test. If we wanted to manually add a user, we can go into our phpMyAdmin, hit insert, and make this manually added test. And I don't have to create these, so I'll just hit go and we'll see our users should have been expanded. Perfect, manually added. And so now the last thing we have to do is integrate this solution with our OAuth application. So all we have to do is go to process OAuth and when we get our user, we have to check, hey, is this user in our database already? And if they are, then move on. And if they're not, let's add them to our database. And so I have code for that here. So at the top of our file, we have to make sure to include db.php, I have it here. And then I'm gonna come down where I decode my user data here, all the way down to my exit. And what I'll do is I'll make it so that I decode user data, that's normal. And then I'm gonna get user data, let's just make this from db, so it's really obvious. User data from db is gonna be get user with the user data that we received from Discord. So if this Discord ID is in here, then uh, we move on. And if it's not in here, so it returns a false statement, uh, add user to database the same way we did in our demo with their Discord ID and their avatar, okay? So if I run through a fresh login, so let's go to should be index.php, I go to login, I hit authorize, I get redirected to some HTTPS, which I don't need, so I'm just gonna go back to HTTP and then I'll hit view all users, we see that my Discord ID was actually added. And now if you wanted to be fancy, you know, you could add another column in here by going to structure and creating add new column, creating a name, saving the name. How do you do that? Change this function, right? Add user to database, add another field in here, user data, uh, username, right? So that would add it in there. And then all you'd have to do is go back to your users page and add another field and say, okay, instead of Discord ID, maybe I wanna output Discord name. Maybe that's what we should have done to begin with, right? But the only other thing to prove to you that this is actually my thing is I'll make the markup include my image. So I'll have here a, um, a list tag that includes my image. And so when this gets information from the database, not only will it have my name, but it's also gonna have an SRC to my uh, avatar. So if I refresh here, I have one, true Discord user, and then two users without a valid image, because as we know, uh, if I go to my view browse, this is a valid Discord avatar. These are not, right? Test avatar and test, so that's not gonna work. All right, let me know if you have any questions, if you maybe need some follow-up videos, some suggestions for what to build out next. Maybe you only want administrators to be able to see this users page Maybe you want the names, you can't figure that out. Let me know in the comments. Um, talk to me on Discord, I might be able to help you out and have a good day.